The inverse square law, one of the absolutely critical laws in astronomy, the inverse square law, is something that you could easily skip over, but it's it's absolutely important to uh, understand most, most stars and how we measure things about stars and planets as well, galaxies. And uh, and, all, and you may see it stated in, in a way that would lead you to just kind of skip past it. For example, your textbook might say, as yours does, uh, brightness is equal to luminosity divided by uh, distance squared. That'd be the typical kind of thing you'd see. And uh, that's that, that's a that's a good summary of what it is. But but uh, you need to think about how we actually use this. It's pretty straightforward. Suppose you take a star, um, you look at it, and and then imagine that you could somehow magically move that star until it's twice as far away. Well, you square the distance and you invert it, and uh, you're going to find that the star would be one quarter as bright. The brightness of the star would be one quarter as 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 bright if it's uh, two times further away. Pretty straightforward. The star would have the same loose luminosity whether it was close or far away. That doesn't matter. Luminosity is intrinsic to the star. But uh, let's let's think about a way to use this and in, in, in something that would make, make it a little bit easier to, for you to work with. And, and here's a way to think about it. Break that law down into three separate steps and, and answer each of the following questions. Um, if you want to find out how the, the inverse square law works to uh, give us a different apparent brightness of an object that we, as we look at it, think of it as the following three steps. Answer the first question, um, how many times farther is some object? Let's just take that as an example. Okay. And as it works out, that's probably the hardest part of this whole thing. Sometimes it's helpful to draw a picture to think. And, and, and so, for example, uh, we'll uh, talk about uh, here's the sun, here's the Earth's orbit around it, the Earth is one astronomical unit from the sun. Out here is Jupiter, okay? And the distance to Jupiter in its orbit is uh, 5 AUs, whereas the Earth is uh, 1 AU away, okay? So the picture just tells us real straightforward. Um, Jupiter is uh, five times as far. So how much sunlight would, would the Earth get? And how much sunlight would Jupiter get compared to the Earth? We can start by asking that question. If you're looking at it from a distance of Jupiter, you're going to uh, be five times further away than you are at the Earth. OK, second step in this thing, and the third step, is to simply take the name inverse square law and follow what it says. And that is the second step is going to be invert. So we're five times farther in this case. And we're going to invert that. That'll be one fifth. Pretty straightforward. And then you, you might guess that step number three is going to involve squaring. OK? OK, so we're going to square one fifth. And that's going to tell us that. Uh, you're looking at the sun from Jupiter's distance, it's going to be 1 25th as bright. That's all you have to do. It's pretty, that's, it's that straightforward. So when you see that equation in the book, you may, uh, you may find that it's a little hard to work with, but this three rule step thing is going to, going to help you out, help you out quite a bit. If you're looking at the sun from Jupiter, it'll be 1 25th as bright as, as uh, the sun appears to be for us here on the Earth. And 125th, that's 4%. So the amount of sunlight that bathes Jupiter and its moons, 4% of the Earth's sunlight is uh, not much, not enough to do much warming.